a list of demands. What I'm about to do a comedy club, and one of them is to have a Persian rug and to be in a burn. I always, so it's perfect comedy. And um, and I always say, you know, I need so I need uh, three hundred jars with candles in them. And I need to feel like I'm in the film, The Notebook. And finally, somebody paid attention to. I said, I, and I say, I want. You know, a lot of elderly couples <laughs> sitting really quite far back. <laughs> I want sort of a tense, um, you know. Um, so thank you. I can't believe it. This is my dream come true. Um, I said, <laughs> um, it, it's very familiar. This setting is very familiar. I grew up on a farm. Obviously, I'm not from right here. I'm Texan. Um, <laughs> But I grew up on a farm in rural Ireland, and uh, as a treat, my dad would wake us up in the middle of the night when the cows were calving to come and watch the cow calves being born. He never called it back. He called his like four-year-old, the seven kids. He would call like I was four the first time it happened, and then we'd all like sleepily walk up to the barn and he'd just see. Have you seen calves being born? Yeah. Yeah. It's gritty. It's real, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, and there's this. There's legs sticking out of another creature, first of all, and when you're four, you're just like, what? And then uh, there's this big whoosh, and then this like calf arrives, sometimes dead. Um, so that's what this reminds me of. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I don't live in the Irish countryside anymore. I moved to New York City. And, um, you know, I honestly, I, I really like New York. I, you know, I chose to live there, I don't really like complaining about it too much, but um, you know it's stressful, right? Like, if you live there, if you go, it's a stressful town, is that right? Like, it's not just me, like, it's the kind of town where everything is like moving a bit too quickly, but also everything is a bit broken. Um, and so the subway is like hard for me, and then once I saw like a toddler missing a train, and his face like, his face reached just the window level of the subway carriage, and the you know the doors closed, and he missed the train, and his face just like was enraged. And uh, I was thinking like you're four, like what have you got to be? What are you even late for? Um, but he was in a total fury, and um, he threw the sippy cup down. The black coffee came spilling out. <laughs> my preschool teacher and now I'm delayed. Uh, so yeah, my friend really likes the city. I think, I feel like if you live in New York, you're always trying to justify like why you do that to yourself. And um, my friend is always like, because I mean this, it's so beautiful around here. I went for a walk earlier in the woods and there's just like the river, it's so calm. And um, and I don't mean to be like, oh, has, but it's just, it's such a beautiful place that you live in. And so I was kind of like, of everywhere in the world, why did I choose like anyway, to live in New York? But whatever. Um, my friend always talks about how like New York is perfect because you can get the subway to the beach. And to me, that sounds like you can get the nightmare to the bigger nightmare. <laughs> because the subway, like I said, is stressful. Like stuff happens down there that I, I've no training for. Like the first time um, that like something weird happened was I got on, I saw an empty seat, I went to sit down, and then this man like pulled me back and was like, does piss? And I said, what? Like, does piss? There was a, like a pool of urine on the seat. And I said, oh, thank you, thank you. And uh, I didn't sit there, and then like people kept getting on the train and going to sit down in the seat in the empty seat and he would say every time like the poof, the poof. and uh, you know first of all I was so thrilled that somebody had actually talked to me and so I tried to chat back to him I was like hey that's so kind of you to like tell everybody and do this service and like tell everyone that there's you know that there's urine on the seat and he was like somebody told me I feel obliged he was so mad <laughs> that he was helping people. Um, and I was like, okay, well, thanks. And uh, then he got off the train and he said to me, your turn. <laughs> oh, God. And uh, so people would
would come and try and sit down and I'd say to them, excuse me, excuse me. And I have this type of voice that like is actually hard to hear for people. Um, so I would say like, sorry, sorry, sorry. Just be careful there, you know, just give me another seat. And they'd just be like, just another crazy woman on the subway. Um, so eventually like I carry with me a notebook. Do you know what those are like paper? It's like a phone, but it's like a, yeah. Um, and I tore out a bit of paper and I, I wrote like caution and uh, I put it in the, uh, I flooded it on the, in the pool to make it more visible. And I was like proudly looking around, but like nobody makes eye contact on the subway. But I was like so happy with myself. And then this one lady was like, well, you're not going to write that in Spanish. And I was like, I was like, oh, oh. And then she was like, I'm kidding. And she was like, <laughs> she like double messed me up because first I was like, shit, I don't speak, so, you know, like I should speak, so, you know. And then she was like, oh, you don't even get that that was a joke. Like she was so cool. <laughs> um, but I was so scared. But, um, and then like getting the subway to the beach, I don't go to the beach at the best of times. Honestly, I'm not really a beach person. I mean, I like the beaches in, in Ireland where I am from. Um, I don't know if any of you, are you guys Irish? Is anybody Irish here? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you are? Oh, everybody's Irish. <laughs> oh, from New Jersey. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is it the same? Okay. Um, have you been? You've been? Oh, you have? Did you ever go to Cove? Yeah. Okay. Or Queenstown, it's called too. You've been to Lismore? Beautiful, seaside town. So the beaches in Lismore, that's my kind of beach. Like stony, gray, like where you kind of, you're obviously wearing a lot of clothes and scarves and hats. <laughs> and because it's cold in Ireland, you have to keep your right? shoes on. In July, exactly. Um, you have to keep your shoes on. The rocks are very, you know, uh, dangerous and painful to walk on. That's my kind of beach. Like looking out at the water, imagining like how many people emigrated, you know, how many people drowned. That's yeah. my kind of, it's like a mournful <laughs> beach. And I love that. Um, and so what about you guys? Did you, guys you, you said you went to Ireland? Didn't you? Yeah. I was born there. Oh, you were born there? Oh, Where? Belfast. Oh, you're from Belfast? Yeah. Are you, did you grow up there? I did. So, you know what's interesting? I saw him from Cove. Do you know Cove? Yeah, south of Belfast. South of Belfast. It's like the, it's basically the opposite end. So yeah. Belfast is where Titanic was made, right? Yeah. The Titanic yeah. ship was built in Belfast. Then the last place the Titanic stopped to take on passengers was my hometown of Cove. And then, well, I don't want to ruin the end of that movie. Yeah. I don't want to ruin that movie. <laughs> it's not like a happy tale. <laughs> Generally, people from Belfast and people from Cove don't have, like, married tales to tell. <laughs> anyway, good night. Um, no. I, uh, and you ended up living here. I did. You're lucky. You made it, kid. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs> Slanta. Um, but, like, I think I don't like, you know, the heat here doesn't really suit me. I'm so happy that it's November. Like everything about November works for me. And like the sky, the trees, like the temperature, it's just so much easier for me. The summer I find really hard. I, uh, every summer when it's like the first boiling hot day here in the States, I'm always just like, oh, I forgot. <laughs> now it's too late to work out. <laughs> you know that feeling? And suddenly you're like, my body is too big for summer. <laughs> and <laughs> all your clothes like feel tight. And, I really hate that feeling, and I always get really like sad. I'm always just like, then look at me as pale as the moon. <laughs> I get kind of like southern belle sort of. <laughs> oh, my body heavy as the soil. Oh, um, I just don't like it. I don't like the heat. And uh, I went into. Uh, I'm so so pale, and I went into. I work in like a shared office space, which is like a thing that you do in New York because. Uh, nobody has any money. Um, and so you work in a shared office space and you pretend like it's a fun thing to do. And uh, you're just like, hey, my community. <laughs> um, but you're just awful. But um, so I, 
I went in there on the first day of summer in August. Well, it wasn't the first day, but it was like the first boiling, awful, humid, sweaty day in August. And I went in and uh, one of my, like, one of the guys who works in the other cubicles was there. We always like chat in the morning over coffee. And uh, he's a black guy. And I said to him, like, oh, this heat, like, I can't stand it. This summer is back and I hate it. And like, I just stopped wearing walking it up. And I said, this is the worst thing about being white. <laughs> and, uh, and he said, yeah, I believe you. <laughs> and I was like, oh, <laughs> you got me. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't really like, I don't know about politics. I mean, obviously, you know, I write for the New York Times, and I think that's probably a giveaway where my loyalties lie. And, you know, I don't want to talk about, you know, who's in the White House now, but I, I do miss a certain you know who um, who used to be in the White House, and I thought it was so amazing to have, you know, this person of colour in the White House, and I think let's, you know, give it to Steve Bannon, you know, the first purple man in the White House. We miss him so, you know. <laughs> I'm kidding. I mean, he's gone, so, but he's not forgotten. Um, his, he, uh, uh, his first wife, or maybe like his only wife, I don't know if he's married now, Hopefully he's single. Um, no, no, no. I don't just like him because he's good looking. I like him because of his policies. Um, to be clear, I don't like Stephen Bannon. I just think he's cute. No, I don't like him. No, no, he's cute. Um, but his first wife was the first person banned from Aer Lingus, which is the Irish national airline, for being too drunk. Like, can you imagine how drunk you would need to be <laughs> to get banned from the Irish national airline? I think it's like, how drunk you need to be to be married to Steve Bannon. Such a stand-up joke, isn't it? That's like a routine. Yeah. I mean, the purple thing didn't really work, but... Um, Okay, I'm just going to check my phone because if what happens is I start to wander into conversation unless I stay on track. Um, it's hard to know where to look. You know when you see somebody taking selfies? It's hard to know where to look, isn't it? It's like catching someone picking their nose. Like everyone does it, but you just feel a little bit of shame for them and for you and for what's happening to us. Um, do you have the phrase here, were you born in the barn? Yeah, that's the phrase worldwide, isn't it? Yeah, it means like, I think it just means you left the door open, right? Yeah. Eat the whole neighborhood. You want to eat the whole neighborhood? That's a good one. Uh, what do you have this one? If you, if you, are you, you know, I'm so hungry I need a scabby baby through the end bar of a rusty gate. <laughs> What's in the same vein? It's not, again, it's not a real thing, but um, it just means, like, are you ready for dinner? But it's very graphic, isn't it? Yeah, to the end bar of, an, of a rusty gate. Um, so, uh, who was talking, somebody was talking about dating earlier, and, uh, you know, it's funny, I just started seeing somebody too, but it's a funny expression, isn't it, when you say, like, um, I'm seeing somebody, because it kind of is like your fancy, it's, it's like a bit fantastical or something. You know, it's like, I just started seeing somebody. Can you see him? He's there in the rocking chair by the window. Quite surprised. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm not, also like, I'm at a funny age, I'm 37. So I don't know, like, I think girlfriend and boyfriend, I don't want to call him, I just don't know what to call him, like, because I think boyfriend is a little bit, it, you know, like, infantile or something, it's a bit like, I'm a, I'm a girl, isn't it? Is it 37? Do you think it's okay? Yeah? He's 15. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, you think it's okay? Yeah, I don't know, I, I think, um, Partner is the other thing, you know, like the partner, but that then feels too formal and like too business like and kind of like, you know, initially we merged in the first quarter yeah. of 2018 and 
going forward will... That's actually all the business language I know. <laughs> I don't know if there's any business people here, but you can fit in the... Oh, there is your business person? Oh, you're a business person? What could I say? You know, I want to say, like... You're just perfect. No, but I want to say, like, continuing it on, I want to be like, you know, but now we'll do a merger or something. <laughs> <laughs> is that convincing? What about synergies? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, really, the thing is, we're going to have synergies. <laughs> so that's, do you feel like you're at work right now? <laughs> okay. Um, so what I, I'll say, like, you know, the next thing, or like, you know, some blue sky thinking, do you actually say that? Or is that like a movie yeah, thing? Yeah, yeah. yeah? Okay. Blue sky, blue sky, yeah. Blue sky. Yeah. I see blue sky up ahead. Something like that. And the synergies are looking good. And, uh, and then, um, is that it? You, oh! Huh? This route is really going to pay people then. Stocks are, stocks are shooting through the roof. No more. Uh, Black Friday. <laughs> so say that again. <laughs> if he's serious, he can do an acquisition. <laughs> oh, acid acquisition. Oh, is that like he pays for cosmetic surgery for me? <laughs> That's a big That's asset. the goal. That's the ultimate goal. Wow, you have a little lot of business people in this barn. I guess that's what happens. You get your money and then you just come, you just go to, go to the barn. Good for you guys. <laughs> um, but what business, isn't there just like a tea factory here or something? <laughs> Is there a brewery here? But well, we did pass a tea factory too. Party. What? Party tea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they don't grow the tea. He blends it. Huh? He blends it from around the world. Oh, he blends it from around the world. Oh, lovely. Um, <laughs> no, I mean that. Like, that is really lovely. <laughs> Sorry. When people are like, how's the comedy show? All you guys would be like, we just like help this Irish girl to understand. <laughs> <laughs> we help her to understand the world of business and also tea. Um, but yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I don't know what to call him really. Eventually, I hope to learn this guy's name. And, <laughs> and I do. I thought it was so lovely that you two who were married for so long and you said it was uh, luck. That was a lovely thing to say. Because I think a lot of times it's, you know, well, at least today, dating people are like, you need to work on yourself. But I'm always like, no, you're just like lucky or you're not lucky. Um, so I thought I would really appreciate that. But I am, um, I think. You know, I joke about cosmetic surgery, but I actually, you know, I don't want to get cosmetic surgery, and I'm going to finish on this and pass you on to the next comedian. Um, because I was getting my makeup done by this lady before, and I shouldn't have trusted her because she said to me, um, you know, ask me anything, ask me any questions you have about makeup, and, you know, I said to her, oh, well, I get, like, these dark circles under my eyes, like, do you know what I could do for that or whatever? And she was like, there's nothing you can do. <laughs> it's because your eyes are balls, they're eyeballs, and they cast a shadow over your face. So, and first, like, for like a minute, I was like, oh yeah, like, that makes sense. <laughs> Eyeball, and the shadow goes down, you know. But then I was like, wait a second, like, at like midday or 6 p.m. when the sun is changed, like, it doesn't change. It's not like the shadows are like, -lo -lo -lo, you know. So anyway, I should have listened to her. Um, but then she said to me, and I want to ask you a question. What's your problem area? And uh, until that moment, I didn't know you have to pick a problem area, like a part of yourself that you really hate. And so if you haven't picked yours, let's put the lights up. We'll tell you to know. Um, and I was like, I don't know, like a problem area, like if I could change one thing. You know, I like my head and I, I use it for talking, thinking, all that stuff. Um, and I use my limbs, you know, like for walking around and gesticulating at waiters and things like that. Um, so I was like, I guess my problem area is like from there to there, like my trunk, like, you know, my torso, my body, my trunk. <laughs> So I would get that removed <laughs> if I could afford 
you know, if I did get that acquisition, um, <laughs> um, I would get that removed and I would just get my head centered. <laughs> and as well, it would give me like a standout thing, you know, in the competitive scene in New York where I had this unique body shape, you know? Like guys, guys would be like, oh, you know me, mm, she's got that star shape. Mm. You know, because I'd be like, mm. <laughs> you know what i do, like, mm. she's like, mm. <laughs> That unique star shape. <laughs> There's been a dictionary on stage this whole time, and so far none of us have used it, but, and hopefully it won't degenerate into us just reading the dictionary out loud to you. <laughs> but we just appreciate so much that you came to the very first comedy show here, and thank you for being so warm and lovely, and I'll put you back to your host.